11 down, just one more to go. Hey everyone, Pete Byrne, WSBT 22 Sports Director, joined as I am every week by Tyler James, co-publisher of Inside ND Sports. Tyler, the Irish have practically navigated the regular season. Only one game remains, and it is, of course, an important one, as it always is this time of year when they head out to the Coliseum on the West Coast to take on a USC team that, record-wise, I think everybody was surprised to see how down they were this year. But when we talked to Marcus Freeman today, uh, he's certainly understandably concerned about the challenge at hand, not just because anytime you suit it up, you could get beat. We've seen that this year. Um, but he feels like USC is better than their record suggests. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. I think even no matter if you're trying to motivate your team or not, I think that's probably a fair analysis of this USC team. They've lost a lot of close games, which certainly isn't great for your team in terms of a judgment, but it also means that they're not like they're getting blown out. It's not like they're uncompetitive. It's not like they don't have talent. They've made some mistakes here or there that have prevented them from winning as many games as they should have. And so we'll see what sort of USC team Notre Dame sees on Saturday. But I would imagine there's there's some extra motivation from USC to maybe end a, 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 a tough season for it with a, a victory and playing a spoiler role against a Notre Dame team um, that has, has given them some fits in recent years. And so we'll, uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a, a good matchup and a, and a good test of, of – what sort of Notre Dame can say about itself to end the regular season. And here's what we know about Notre Dame right now heading into this game. Um, they're probably about as fresh as you can be coming off of a, of a game because they didn't have to play their starters a whole lot in the second half against Army, so that's a positive. Uh, Howard Cross still questionable. Uh, Junior Tui Alamaka probably not going to play. There were some other injury news today as well. Yeah, Kingston Viliamu Asa will not be playing for Notre Dame, and that's a reserve linebacker, but someone who plays a bit. Um, so Notre Dame will need to adjust accordingly and I think probably just shorten its linebacker rotation. Um, Mitch Jeter is good to go as he played last week. He's been dealing with that injury issue, but he's healthy. Um, but, yeah, Howard Cross, I would imagine he'll play. Uh, Marcus Freeman said after the game on Saturday that he did practice some last week. Um, so I think it would be – there probably have to be a setback in order for him to not play because there's such a wide gap between now and then the next time Notre Dame would play if uh, they make it to the playoffs. So I think uh, anyone who's probably close will get that shove to, to play. Um, and I think Howard Cross is probably the, the one guy that you have in mind there that will probably be ready to go and give what he can regardless of how, how much his ankle is hurting. And then the one other notable player we heard about today, K.K. Smith, has, oh, has right. a collarbone injury, had surgery. He's out uh, four to six weeks, they said, so he certainly doesn't play. He may not play again uh, this season. I want to take you back to Mitch Jeter, though. Uh, he's He's been questionable. He's been playing more and more over the last couple of weeks. Hasn't necessarily been playing well. I don't yeah. know how much of that is injury-related, how much of that is mental, but that's something that Marcus Freeman talked about today. Yeah, and I mean, Marcus Freeman did the thing where he's – professed his confidence in Mitch yeah. Jeter. Um, it's not like they're going to tr trot someone else out there. Um, he felt that he got a good leg onto the kick that he missed from 48 yards out against uh, Army, and that wasn't good, but it, Notre Dame at least believes it has the right answer there. It certainly needs Mitch Jeter to get back to making some field goals to probably have some confidence because – the next few field goals he takes are probably going to be more and more important throughout the season now. Sure. So um, he, he needs to get back on track. They have to figure out whatever small issues that are causing him to make um, some mistakes and also protection up front with, with getting a field goal block. That's the third time he's had a field goal block this season. Um, so Notre Dame's got to iron some things out there and make sure that he's given the best opportunity to make a field goal as well. It's funny how much things have changed over the last two months. I mean, Certainly after Notre Dame's loss to Northern Illinois, there was the sky is falling mentality yeah. that you get from all fan bases. And then in the weeks immediately following that, while they were winning, they weren't necessarily winning impressively. The offense certainly was was underwhelming. Things have changed, right? Yeah. Uh, Riley Leonard is passing the ball efficiently. They're running the ball at a tremendous clip. Uh, how much different is this offense right now, and how how dangerous do you think this offense is as they, as they wrap up the regular season? And it sure looks like head toward the postseason yeah I think this offense is, is giving opponents a lot to think about now you can't really just crowd the box and make Riley Leonard throw to try and try to stop the run there's too many different things that Notre Dame can do in its running game and with its passing game right now um, that are reliable I still think there's room for improvement certainly with this offense but I think there's more confidence throughout within the offensive line within the quarterback within the wide receiver group and so I think this offense presents so many different challenges for opponents um, 
and even the the ones that were strengths early in the season have become even greater strengths. Like Jeremiah Love is playing his best football right now, um, and that's a problem for any defense to go against. And there's a stable of backs behind him that can step up when he needs a break. So um, Notre Dame is, is throwing a lot of different things at teams, and it's doing those things well. Um, there's room for improvement, like Marcus Freeman talked about, not scoring on the goal line. You got some changes you need to make there and some adjustments to do better in those situations. Um, but Notre Dame is really putting together – an improving resume as it as it relates to the offense and something that can be dominant, not just a question mark that's being held up by the defense. Right. You say dominant. I mean, as a football coach, these are first world problems, right? right? I mean, we're not talking about finding ways to win games. We're talking about ways to be perfect, which is what yeah. what's what they're striving for and what they have nearly been the last two weeks. I mean, I think another thing that plays into this is we start to get a little bit more big picture. I mean, you forget how good their defense has been, right? Mm -hmm. They're giving up about 10 points per game. So. Yeah. Well, the, the offense doesn't have to be perfect, right? I mean, if you can win a game with 17 points from here on out, yeah. you know, that's that's a pretty powerful thing. Yeah, you take what you can get, and the defense is giving the offense a lot to have. So you, the offense is taking advantage of a lot of its opportunities, and I would expect the defense will continue to give them those. Um, but, yeah, the, the – uh, want to be perfect like Marcus Freeman says he loses sleep after they don't score on the goal line or they have too many penalties on a drive um, so those are things that this team is really focused on in terms of one game at a time one play at a time win the interval all, all the cliches yeah. that we hear but they really do matter in ways that allow you to stay focused and then when you come to maybe a maybe a more pressure field game like this one where you feel like your season's on the line you, you feel like you've played with that pressure all season long because that's sort of how They've approached the game since the Northern Illinois loss. And uh, it, it does come down to this, ga this game. The season is on the line. Marcus Freeman essentially admitted that today. There's no sense not. He says, I know it. My players know it. But, but it can be as loud or as quiet as we let it be. And they have done a good job tuning that out and staying focused. Uh, I want to talk about this game really quickly as, as a data point. Because Notre Dame's in a position now where they could get a home playoff game. And yep. now, I mean, you're, you're getting greedy. But, but the higher your seating is, the yeah. easier the path appears to be the way this playoff bracket looks like it's shaking out with with a week and a, and a conference championship week to go uh penn state has played notre dame penn state is one spot ahead of notre dame currently they have played usc they beat them in overtime do you think that there's any merit to notre dame winning this game convincingly as opposed to winning it close i think so i think that should be a part of the comparison between those two teams certainly there's a lot more that you have to compare between the two teams in terms of their schedule penn state hasn't really had marquee victories right. there haven't been very impressive victories their best bullet point right now is a loss to Ohio State and obviously when you talk about Notre Dame's loss it's much worse right. um, but I think there's there's reasons to consider if Notre Dame is, has better wins and, and a better resume um, than Penn State I think this USC game can go a long way in in sort of open the door for that conversation um, I also think let Army go out and win the win the AAC like oh, yeah. allow that win to look even better even though Notre Dame obviously won handily, but if, if, if Army keeps winning some more games the way Navy hasn't, maybe that becomes an even better bullet point for Notre Dame as well. And then one more game that Irish fans might want to pay attention to this weekend after they watch the Irish and USC on WSBT, at least if you're in South Bend, That's CBS right. nationally. Um, you know, Texas A&M lost this week, but they could still end up being the SEC champions, and that would certainly be good for the resume. Yeah, any good that A&M does is, is good for Notre Dame. It's been a bit of an up-and-down <laughs> season for A&M. Uh, and so that's been probably a little bit frustrating if you're a Notre Dame fan trying to, to root on for your resume. But, yeah, A&M has the talent and the ability to win those kinds of games. And so um, as weird as this SEC season has been, a and still in the mix um, and, and can, can bolster Notre Dame's resume with another win. All right. He's Tyler James, co-publisher of Inside Indy Sports. Tyler, it's been fun doing this uh, for the last 12 weeks. Hopefully we have a few more uh, in December Sounds and January. Good. You bet. All right, thanks for joining us. Irish and USC kickoff at 3.30 Eastern time from the Coliseum on CBS this Saturday.